going on, everyone? You're listening and watching to the Iskandi Sports Podcast. I I don't know what rank I am on my street anymore. Top five, <laughs> maybe. There are a lot. Our guest, uh, our guest today is a professional basketball player from Burlington, currently playing in Italy. Soon to be reality TV star. I have that. Stop! 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 Uh, it, stop! It, stop! 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 <laughs> Still, you're no, killing me, fam. Oh. Really, no, dude. I, we'll talk about it, but like I can see it, like Bachelor or something. It's gonna be, it's in the cards. You're not. Stop this. No, 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 no. I, you, you, it. You'll never see me on the Bachelor. But anyway, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But it's uh, what the people yeah. want to see. Anyways, Teo shit too. How you doing, bro? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing today, fam? No, it's all good, bro. I mean, lockdown. This is all I can do is just. Talk to people on Zoom. Yeah, you're finding out, you're, you're gonna find love. Yeah. You're gonna find love after lockdown. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got mine before lockdown, so I'm chilling. And I Done. saw it. <laughs> I'm chilling. Okay. I'm good. Okay, good. <laughs> how, uh, how are you doing over in Italy? Um, depends how you put it. Like, so, like, I've been here since middle of September. Um, we were practicing all of September and most of October, and then suddenly we got hit with lockdown because the cases were like in the 40,000s. And when I first got here, it was probably like five, four thousand. So because of that, we've been we were training all of October. I mean, end of October all the way until like mid December, so so Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, practicing outside, I haven't touched the basketball until recent, like literally like two weeks ago. So like it's been kind of stressful and frustrating, you know. You want to play basketball, you leave home to you know, like play a game that you love, do what you do best, and you just gotta be able to adjust to the times that we're in right now. All doing its thing, you know what I mean. But you know, at the same time, it's just knowing what you're here for and here to get the job done. Yeah. So it, I know Italy in the beginning got hit like really hard by the pandemic. Yeah. What was it like being in there and like? kind of experiencing it firsthand? Well, um, last so last year, when it first happened, people didn't really take it seriously, seriously. Like, mm-hmm. I remember my manager, my the president of my team was, like, talking to me, to me to dinner, and I was asking how I felt about COVID stuff when it was when first, first came out, like, in, what, say, January or like mm-hmm. December. And he just personally doesn't think that it feels anything serious. Like, well, it's just, like, another... Another disease that we're talking about, like we've had, so as we've had freaking mad calories, we've had like E. coli, all that stuff. Like it's nothing to take serious. But like, what happens is like when you hear the cases start rising, like you start creating like some sort of fear mongering and getting kind of worried about stuff. So people in general, like in the town I was in, like started wearing their masks, it wasn't mandatory, but like mm-hmm. a lot of people were afraid. And like people started like pointing fingers. Like I kind of had like um, a dispute with a, 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 a little more mature lady in the grocery yeah. store. Like she kind of had some, some slurs, some racial slurs yeah. to me. And like I, I handled it in the proper way. I wanted to do a, I wanted to handle a different way. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. But, Sorry, I think I misheard the first part of that. You said there was an old. So like, old so like, so like, so like there was a more mature lady at the grocery store with me, and like I kind of was in her, in her space, and she kind of like had some words for me if you want to put it that way and um i didn't take it nicely but like i had to um take it to my house i guess to like calm myself down because i was kind of mad I'm like it's not my fault like you're yeah like, we weren't that close but again it is what it is Bro, but it was it, so dead if she was talking crazy you can at least refer to her as an old lady you're being you're being but you know me like you know me like you know me, man. Ties are like, uh, yeah. I'm a respectful man, you know. I'm a respectful guy. Like, I'm not going to disrespect you like that, but you know, like. Nah, you're a bigger man than me, bro. <laughs> I'd be telling this story way different. <laughs> oh, trust. I'm a, bro. Hey, it is what it is. In the moment at that time, right. no, I was, I was thinking of it completely different, bro. You don't understand. I was that. Yeah. That, but calm down. Talk to right. you know, one or two of my friends. Okay. And just let it go. We're maturing. We're maturing. I feel you. Yeah. Um, you have a, a, a you have a cool upbringing, though. I want to get into that. So, where were you born, yeah, and you. Um, how did that shape you? 
So um, I was born in the UK, um, London. Mm. Stand up for Big Four Four. Um, moved to Canada when I was 10 years old to Burlington. Just lived near Pearson area. You know how it is. That, like, you know how Burlington is. You got like mm-hmm. downtown Burlington, Assumption Central, and you got like the little preppy kids in Notre Dame and some <laughs> MM kids, and you got Pearson. I lived near the Pearson kids, and, and, all, and also you got Assumption and all of that down there. Yeah. It's like, you guys are one big. What, which would you put in? When Nelson. Oh, so exactly. You're part of yeah. them, though. Assumption, Nelson, baby. You guys are like one big happy family. Anyway, <laughs> you have Corpus, a little baby out of everybody else. Um, but yeah, no. Um, what was I going to say? We um, moved to Burlington. Like I said, I was, in, I was in the Pearson area. Like, it was good. Like, it was, a, it was a different kind of like culture shock to me because, like, the way people did things there was a lot different from how we did in the UK. And, like, also, um, had no expectations. I didn't expect like anything of it. Like I thought we were probably going to be in the country for like probably half half a year and going mm-hmm. back because our parents get sick of it. But no, like we adjusted very nicely and like I did end up liking the area a lot and it was very peaceful. And I so- personally think Burlington like was probably the, the best place for me and my family to move to because mm-hmm. it's so quiet, so laid back, and like there's a lot of friendship that you're attained. Um, so yeah, I moved to Burlington, then I went to Corpus Christi. Yeah. Um, like I said, baby school, right? I didn't expect to go to Corpus, but I applied for it. Um, different experience. Like, honestly, like, never went to a Catholic school. Um, there's a whole different, like, lifestyle. Like, it was a little bit more stricter, but you would think that, but people just tend to be very, um, I don't know, like I can't use the word I can't really use the word for it because like it's just the adjustment from a public school to a private to a, like a public yeah. school. It's so different. I can't use the word for it. Um played high school basketball at Corpus. I personally did not think I was gonna make the basketball team. Even though yeah. like I really wanted to play basketball. Um yeah, I I I'm telling you right now, like I was not good at basketball. Like I was not at all. And like I didn't think anything of that at the time, but then after playing house league in grade eight, I was like, hey, you know, let me actually like, dedicate a summer to like playing basketball. Mm-hmm. So I did. I trained. And I went to like a, my first rep trial, and I thought I did well the first trial. Like, and I, my 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 mom knows this. My girl knows this. Like, man, that were there on that first trial know this. I I swear, like, I don't know what it was, but I was I was built different that day. But then the next trial we were at the end, like. But next child at Tansley and like I just didn't I don't know, I just I think I got shy. I got shy and I was like, wow, this I have to be at a certain level to like be on the team and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so when I was at Corpus, like that was motivation for me to try to out the team at Corpus. I went to Corpus, made the junior team, thought I would play. Personally, like I was confident enough to feel like mm-hmm. I should have played a little bit more, but like when you're in grade nine, like Yeah. Then you're, and then your first game of the year is against Holy Trinity, like you know, it's my Holy Trinity and also, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see how much better they are. Oh, I, I was shaking. <laughs> I was shaking. <laughs> Things are different. Um, what else? Um, you're talking about Corpus Christi. Was there any standout games at high school? You start playing basketball, then you go to Corpus, you want to play well at Corpus. And then you play rap. How you play rap is how it travels to uh, um, high school. And mm-hmm. then AAU, when AAU started to begin. At the time, there was only like grassroots and Jaya Bounce and the right. Northern King, which is another AAU program that I played for. Yeah. Suddenly, like when I went to the States, the first game I played in the States was at Pitt Jam Fest and it was against the team final who I had to guard, you know, Ronnie Hollis Jefferson. Oh yeah, I had to guard Ronnie Hall's Jefferson the entire game for literally twenty five minutes. It was Dude. I won't lie, like that was my first. He, he didn't kill me, honestly. I thought he would murder me. I thought he would actually kill me, but like <laughs> he still had. He still listen. He still had 20, 20 and ten. I played well too, but like not as well as he as, as him. Yeah. But like I really realized, wow, these guys are different. Like, I got mm-hmm. I got a fixed up. 
But because, like, again, it's just like some Dragon Ball Z stuff. Like, when you meet somebody <laughs> who's stronger and better than you, and you consistently play against guys that are better than you all the time, and play against other competition that's even twice as good as you, mm-hmm. you start trying to meet, uh, rise to the occasion and mean those standards. So when mm-hmm. you come back to high school, like, there's a separation. So, like, going to grade 11, like, back to the question about, like, my most memorable game. Mm-hmm. Um, my first game back in grade 11, I had had 25 and 10. Yeah. After, like, after like barely scoring, like, a lot at Corpus in grade 10. Even though, like, I was one of the guys mm-hmm. at Corpus, I wasn't, like, putting up crazy, crazy numbers like that. I said, well, but not as, not to my, not to, like, mm-hmm my standards yeah there's two things i want to pick at there the first one's kind of a comment like 20 and 10 25 and 10 for high school at that time you gotta like account for inflation almost like people there's less possessions in high school basketball when we played it's a slower game it's not the three pointers are like you know they're they're rare right you're not so like a 25 and 10 line back then was actually like that's a that's a really good line for at that point. And the second thing I wanted to pick up on you was, you were talking about how you were you know playing up in AAU and then you come mm-hmm. back to high school and now yeah. that you have that experience playing up, you're doing better in high school. But like, what? How do you combat the sort of like, um, I guess digression, if you will? So like, you're playing up to your competition when you're in AAU, but when you're playing yeah. high school. The first couple of games, you're going to still be playing an AAU level. How do you sustain that and not kind of play down to your competition? Well, like for that, it's, you just have to keep the gap, the gap on the on the on the pedal, right? You just got to mm-hmm. keep on playing and you know not holding back on people. Like you see bad competition, doesn't mean that you should like take a day off or play because like you want to help improve yourself. Like it's always something new to learn. I'm like I said. Learning for me is important. Like I want to learn new things because it, that next thing that I learn can make me that much closer to my goal. Mm. But in terms of digression, like I did digress because I personally, when I went back to corpus, I still I didn't feel like I was valued enough for other corpus. Mm-hmm. Like I, I like I was, I personally could confidently say I was the most talented guy mm-hmm. besides my brother and like beyond and like a few other one one two other guys. Mm-hmm. but I never like was um, treated the way I was supposed to be treated when I was playing at Corpus mm-hmm. and I some of it was on my own with myself mm-hmm. because I didn't take it as serious as I should have I was kind of at, at such a high that I was like you know what I'm here I was complacent I wanted to get better but I was a little bit mm-hmm. complacent with what I was right. and so with that being said I just said to, I just um realized that I was kind of digressing in mentality rather than my skill. Like I wasn't mature about how I handled things. Mm-hmm. I still wanted to learn and get better, but like I was not mature enough when it came to, or digressing, so what you're saying, mm-hmm. in terms of um, my maturity as a mm-hmm. basketball player. Um, was kind of the corpus treatment have anything to do with, uh, you going to Athletes Institute? I want to talk about your time. Um, no, I'm uh, and all honestly, like I'm, I'm so happy I went to Corpus. I'm happy. I'm yeah, for years. sure, for sure. Like, like, like I got, I got, I got my. I have to do do my last to do right, but mm-hmm. I just felt like in order for me to take myself to the next level after being at Northern King, as mm-hmm. well like in grade twelve before I graduated grade twelve at Corpus, I went to NPH camp to showcase. Right. The very, the very first one, Orangeville. When I don't know if you've heard of Rita, heard of Rita before. No, um, you haven't. Not too it's, sure. No, like, so basically, like, my, fr- my friend, like, Marcus Upshaw, his dad had a program mm-hmm. in Orangeville okay. at Africa Institute, and they combined Africa Institute with Rita at the time, and they had, like, um, a turn- they had a tournament and a team, but they also had a showcase that was MPH, North Pole Hoops. Okay. So I went to the first showcase, and I was with, like, one of the, like, most of the top high school players in Ontario at the time, mm-hmm. and I played well, made the All-Star game, I did my thing, wasn't enough, but from then, I got, like, a couple of prep schools interested in me and the prep school was at the institute mm-hmm. so um grade going to grade 13 um i had to make a decision to go to rita or go to um at the institute and i just felt like me and my family said we went after the institute was the best but what made me want to go there the most is that um thank you for jesse, jesse tipping 
he made me write um, an essay as to why I should go there. He made mm-hmm. all of us, every single one of the players on, on that roster, write an essay why they should go to Africa. Okay, keep going. <laughs> and yeah, it's fine. And they, um, I got it. And because of that, I got full um, tuition when I went there. Everything was oh, taken care of. Yeah, full tuition, everything was taken care of. And um, so that as well, me going to Africa Institute, it was probably it was probably like one of the best decisions I've ever made because I didn't know what I was capable of. I knew I had talent, but I didn't know like how far I could take it. Mm-hmm. But Corpus in itself, I just had to make my own decision because I I felt like I wasn't really any better staying at Corpus. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about the alarm, by the way. We are doing this podcast an hour earlier than we thought we were gonna do it. So then I just had a couple of reminders to making sure I was all ready. Anyways. You're good. Uh, You're good. Anyways, but um, Dustin McTaggart uh, talked about that a lot, about the prep experience. Obviously, he's a, he's a head coach over at Oakville right now. Yeah. And it's just, especially for like a grade 13 year, it's just a, a year of basketball where it's just eat, sleep, play basketball. And if you can, mm-hmm. if you can do that without expense, without, <laughs> without major expense to like you and your family and stuff like that, that's a huge opportunity. I think like, yeah, of, of course, I think going to athletes is probably the right decision on that position that you're in at that point i won't laugh I, this is like probably the funniest story ever and this and this is when my conditioning like has to get quick like my conditioning got really good mm-hmm. um because of that i'm not a ladies man i'm not a player like that but i went to my school we'll talk about it i went Keep to going. i went to, i went to, yeah i went to orangeville um district and like yeah. as we we're leaving to go to our first or second preseason practice i see a teacher and I was, I tried to flirt the teacher, me being stupid as usual. Like, no, no, listen, listen, my fault. My- <laughs> yes, yes, it's your fault. What the hell? She's a teacher. Okay, keep going. <laughs> I'm bold, I'm bold, I'm bold. Everyone knows that high school, university, everyone knows I'm just bold, but I um, did that. And then we went to the facility. Wait, wait, what did what? I hollered the teacher. Oh, you call her? Okay, you were like, yeah, I did that. And then you kept going as if like, <laughs> No, 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 And I went to the facility, and then um, my coach calls us all into the gym. He's like, I mean, we're all shooting and stuff, like, doing, like, our workouts, and he's like, everybody stop. Told everybody to get the baseline. On the sideline, I mean. We ran because of me. Um, she didn't feel uncomfortable, but, like, someone snitched, I guess, in that class, and they told the principal. And then told the principal, who's good friends with the whatever the program, told my coach. We ran 50 17s that had to be done in under a minute, five seconds. So 15, 17. Yeah. And there was like a 20 second break, 20 second break. That was the one day I've, I've ran. I've never been so tired in my life in conditioning. That was the only day. Even in university, I wasn't that tired. I had my moments because I'm not eating properly, but like that was the one day I was like, yo, like I am crossed. <laughs> oh my God. So you just see, you, you knew she was a teacher at the time? I thought, no, 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 I didn't. No, I you didn't. didn't. I didn't know. Okay, that makes it less bad. I thought you were going to say, like, I got into the gym and then coach puts on the baseline because someone was flirting with his wife or something crazy like that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> of course not. If that, if. Me? No, <laughs> you maybe. So I, I well, <laughs> uh, that's a whole nother segment. It's a whole nother segment we're gonna get to. I'm really excited yeah. about that. Um, <laughs> okay, so you you learn a lot at Athletes Institute. Um, yeah, basketball is good. It's now becoming like a job. Um, yeah. At what point in that year were you starting to? You're talking earlier about like the the interest you were getting from schools. For the next yeah. level um mm-hmm. how was that process and like was it humbling because like you were talking about before how like, you didn't even think you're good at basketball in the beginning and whatnot so now that you've kind of got those um that experience from athletes institute and now you're going to um a part of your life where you're getting letters in the mail about all these other schools so just take us through that process a little bit and like kind of like the experience um, like you said, it was humbling because, um, you know, like this, 
steps to what you want in your life as a basketball player. You just want to, you want to be able to play high school as well and get, um, be able to play um, basketball after high school. Mm-hmm. So when I'm getting, so when I'm getting like Division One letters about, oh, we really like you, we want you to come visit our school, and um, we're really interested in how you play and you'll be able to play on our team. It makes you kind of happy. It makes you kind of feel like, you know, like you're there. You just got to keep on building from there. I mean, building from the stuff mm-hmm. that, you're, that you're giving. And, um, you know, as long as you have faith in yourself, um, you'll be able to achieve your goals. And like, that was like, one of my biggest goals at the time. I don't think about like, oh, making MBA. My goal is to really just to try, try and play Division One. Trying mm-hmm. to play school, no, not in Division One. Playing basketball, like um, as post secondary. Mm-hmm. And so you have the letters in front of you, and what draws you to picking the school that you ultimately picked? So, like, there's a lot of schools. A lot of schools, like, and anyone that has like played prep school knows how Division One coaches mm-hmm. are like. Then they said they're interested in you. you. You can't take it face value. You just have to mm-hmm. like, keep playing the game until you see something concrete on right. paper or via tweet at that time. Yeah. So um, when I was getting interested in schools and asking them to come visit, like I didn't think anything of it. I just wanted to play, just keep playing and playing, playing, see what I can get from it. But certain schools, like like saying effects, like Coach K specifically flew down to come see me and like I didn't remember this but like when he came to see me after my game uh my first not first game but we had a tournament you're talking so about x Men coach Steve Kunchowski yeah. right because there's another yeah, coach Kunchowski. K that people people think about so. yeah 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 yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> so Steve Kunchowski Steve Kunchowski yeah. when Steve when coach K from X came down when yeah. came yeah. down um I remember like writing to universities this was like before like um, this is like when I'm applying to like universities, like in high school, like just for my parents or myself, you know, mm-hmm. and like, I wanted to play basketball, obviously, see if I could. And like, I remember like emailing Coach K, like a big letter about mm-hmm. one play at X. And then he went through his mail and saw my name and then he put my name to me being on the Apple Institute roster. Mm-hmm. And he came down to see me and I played well thankfully mm-hmm. and then he offered me on the spot he offered me to go to Santa Fe so then I was like yeah I'm strong to consider it and it was also my first visit yeah so um coach Steve K is uh at that time where you were coming into the program he had yeah. 39 years of experience at that point yes um yes. so a guy that's really seen the scene build up what were some things that you were able to get from him? Because I'm, I'm going to assume that he was probably the longest tenured coach that you've probably worked with. Yes, 1,000%. Um, what was it like working with him? Yeah, what, or what's something you got from him in those experiences? Like, is there anything that's stuck? Don't feel complacent. Yeah. Don't be complacent with yourself. Because, again, mature, like all, to me, it's all about maturity and understanding what it is about yourself. You have to know yourself. Mm-hmm. I thought like me being as talented as I was, I didn't have as much to prove. Mm-hmm. But I was probably about the complete wrong way. I went to Santa Fe in my freshman year thinking I was gonna play, but I ended up not even playing at all mm-hmm. in my first year. Barely playing until like maybe until like when it mattered in um playoffs that year, my first year and like the last couple of games of the season. But like complacency, like I didn't want to remain complacent. I didn't. I remained too complacent in myself because I thought, like I said, I was going to play. But mm-hmm. really, really, realistically, if you get too complacent, you get left behind. And next thing you know, like instead of you guys, you and your freshman teammates being on the same level of um, respectability and accountability, as they become more accountable for their mistakes, they the coach is trusting them more. I wouldn't hold myself account- as accountable as I should have. And mm-hmm. as I progress, like you have four freshmen out of the five of us starting, and then me come off the bench, and mm-hmm. then like not or mind playing sometimes. So like, it's as much as like it was like 
something that hurt me. It was also something that helped me because it made me realize that there's never time to stop working. You should always be able to take the time to see what what it is that you want and see what it is that you have to what you have to do to achieve those goals. Did that make you reflect on your corpus time? Because I know that's something that you thought about over at corpus where you thought uh, you might have gotten complacent there. So did that did him telling you that at that point really kind of ring home different because of the kind of the re- repeat experiences you're having? Yes. No, one, one, one million percent. Like, it's one of those things like you think about and you just say to yourself, like, why did I do it again? Why did I, why did I fall down that path again? Mm-hmm. Like, you, like, maybe, again, it's about maturity because most of these kids that, like, I grew up with, like, they didn't feel, they, they have, like, people in their back, behind them or, like, in their ear telling them, don't be complacent, don't be complacent. Mm-hmm. I'm the oldest, I'm the oldest child in my family. So right. like, I didn't have like, and I didn't have like older um, people to tell me what to mm-hmm. do. I just had coaches that told me to do. But like, mm-hmm. there's so many um, ways of thinking and way of approaching life that like I tried taking and mixing and matching that I myself got lost in all of it. Mm-hmm. And the complacency like that I dealt with at Corpus was a lot, even though I played because they have mm-hmm. to play me. At university, like, it, like they don't like high school they they, they care about their teacher they don't care about necessarily about the coach yeah. because they're still going to teach but like at university the coach could lose his job if he just plays the guy just because like he's playing if there's no results there's no, no production i don't need you i'll find somebody else and it's mm-hmm. tough to say that and it's the truth that's how it is that's how basketball is if, if you're not doing the job right somebody else will it, and it's when something you have to work on is complacency, it's so annoying to deal with because it's not like a physical attribute, right? It's not anything that you can like kind of physically change. It's just like a mentality at that point. So yeah. what have you done since going pro to deal with that? Because it is it is a hard thing to work on because you can say, don't be complacent, don't be complacent. And it's just in one year, out the other year. And it's like nobody's fault when that happens. It's just, you know, it, it's... So I, I don't I don't know if there's anyone that's actually been talking about kind of like tips and stuff to to deal with that. No, like I learned it on my own the hard way though, mm-hmm. because yeah, so like first year Saint Effect, great coach, mm-hmm. speaking Charles is an amazing coach. I'm happy for him, um, and all that he's accomplished with our team and stuff. First year, like I didn't play on until like the end of the season and playoffs mm-hmm. just when it mattered. Second year, I started playing a little more. Third mm-hmm. year, I started playing a little bit more, and then fourth year, I got cut. Mm-hmm. And then fourth year, I ended up playing um, men's league and stuff for the meantime to keep in shape and whatever while was in effect. And then I was playing a men's league game. My friend inbounded me the ball, and I made a cut, went to the rim, dunked the ball, and my landed, I dislocated my knee. And for my ACL and my LCL and damage my meniscus. Yeah. So um, that was kind of a dark period in my life. Like I, mm-hmm. I won't lie to you. Like I, it was it was tough. Like very tough. And like a lot of people would deal with injuries and stuff. Like may roll their ankles, mm-hmm. may um, um, you know hurt their shoulder or like pull something full of muscle. But like something like me, like some a guy like me who most people would say like. I'm never the guy to get injured or I'm never in pain. Like, mm-hmm. I'm Superman. But, like, like for, for the once, like, this, maybe I'm boosting. But for once in my life, I actually thought, like, I was mortal. I, yeah. I, I thought I was mortal for a long time. But, like, no, I was mortal still. Like, I never thought I could get injured like that. And, like, I did. Mm-hmm. And, like I said, I was in a dark time in my life. And, like, I was in school, just going to school, sad, depressed. I, I, I played basketball again. And then. I waited until um, July 2017 to get surgery, which is mm-hmm. good. I'm happy after doing it in 2016. Mm-hmm. And I realized how much I missed basketball and how much I took it for granted. So mm-hmm. again, with the complacency, like I was so complacent because I thought I was immortal. I didn't think mm-hmm. I would get hurt. I thought my time was coming, my time was coming. Like, don't worry, like 
hey, guess what? Coach K cut you. Guess what? I'm going to go to a different school. Who cares? Like, <laughs> like I'm built different. Da, da, da. Oh, great. You injured yourself. That's another mm-hmm. year off. Now you're older player. Great. What's next, Taylor? I think one of the points there, like, it's just the uh, being grateful for for basketball is it's hard to do it when it hasn't been taken away from you, right? So I guess that experience of going through the injury process and not being able to do it anymore, I feel like that's probably something, an element that really contributed to you or to anyone in yeah. general that, that has uh, those complacency issues because now you're like, okay, it's just a privilege to play at this point. Like there's no, yeah. there's no more, I deserve this, I deserve that. It's just, let's just hoop, you know, and you there's never so know. Many other, yeah, because there's so many other guys that want to be in position, but when you, mm-hmm. as talented as you are, like I admit it to myself, like I was mm-hmm. talented, I was very talented, mm-hmm. but like I didn't, I took, I took it for granted. And like, because mm-hmm. I took it for granted so much, I ended up in the position that I was, like I ended up getting cut from my team, a like, university team that I really liked playing with, like my best friends on the team, like the guys I grew up with, the guys I wasn't on my, in a, in a frat house with, the guys who like I'm going out with, the guys that I went to go visit with in the summer and we have like our own yearly hangouts and stuff. Like I literally made myself, put myself in that position because of the decisions, the decisions I made. I got so caught up with like, oh, like basketball, take care of itself. I have the talent to do this. I don't need to mm-hmm. worry about this. I'll train in the summers. Yeah, that's fine. I got my brother, I got this person, I got that person. Mm-hmm. So like the extra work counts, counts more. So that complacency and maturity to realize that and tackle mm-hmm. that issue, that's what I have to deal with. Like I just said to myself, like, okay, like, come on, bro, like you could be the most talented like person ever. Not even just like skill wise, yeah, yeah. It's physically, potential wise, everything was there. Everything is there. Even now it is still there. It's just like right now at this age, like potential doesn't mean anything. It's just about what have you shown for over time. Right. Um I want to go over the timeline again real quick. So how long are you at uh, X-Men and how how did Acadia, wh- when did Acadia happen? So um, went to X, played an extra three years. Yeah. Um, then I, then um, because I got injured, I, yeah, um, well, I got cut my fourth year and then like mm-hmm. I had to re- like had to rehab for my fifth. Mm-hmm. So that's my five years at X, graduated in 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, I was originally going to go to Regina to play Regina, but I decided, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I, I've lived in Manitoba and I've been to Saskatchewan. Like, Regina, it's no fun. Okay, keep going. <laughs> it's no fun. No fun. <laughs> it's, it's, you um, dodged a little bit. This is fun. Honestly, like when I went on the Quinn visit, it seemed perfect. It seemed good because that's how the teenagers are. And like I was going I really wanted to go. Mm-hmm. But then what happened was I um kind of said, No, I'm gonna start working. Mm-hmm. So I started working I started doing sales jobs, I started working at, like uh in the science industry for a little bit and then um like like tech and like um automotive sales as well. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel happy. So then like I was talking to one of my old like coaches when I was in grade 12, Luke Stevenson. Mm-hmm. And um, the coaches that the coaches at Acadia liked me already from when I was in first year. And they wanted me to come to Acadia right away. Hold so, on, sorry. Hold on. There's a reason they liked you after your first year at, at X Men. Why? There is why? it's on YouTube. And I'm gonna Oh yeah. Remember, I'm gonna remember <laughs> that I'm gonna play it over this overlay. So if, if future Andrew remembers, put the clip in here. Yeah. Yeah. You posterized the crap out of someone <laughs> at Acadia your freshman year. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I do. It was yeah. hard, and then I tapped the rim. I just that's all she wrote. It, it was. It, it's I my favorite. Type of dunk. I just took off. Dude, it, it's my favorite type of dunk where it's like your body on body, and then you angle and then come back. Those kinds of yeah. uh, when when you have the contact and you just kind of like swim around it, dude. It, anyways, that was against Acadia. But you were a freshman, yeah. so they, they still remember that play. I think, yeah, ten percent. Yeah, of course they do. Of course, of course <laughs> they do. Even with the injury, yeah, no, I, I was yeah. still doing that. But it's just funny with just with the whole dunking thing. It's just like, yeah, there's so many guys like that I've posted, and I just I never really took it in. Like I yeah. was like actually punched on, but it's just like even in high school, like I just give you one other one for mm-hmm. in terms of like a game. 
in grade uh, grade 12 actually we were playing in the all catholic mm-hmm. and like we were playing laola mm-hmm. i was coming i rejected a screen and the guy literally is at like the charge the charge line yeah i took off i think i, I honestly i'm not going to lie to you and man can not can vouch me and stuff whoever it may be i think mm-hmm. it was like one or two steps off of the off of the foul line and i took off my punch on that so bad it was bad <laughs> it was bad so i'm not surprised yeah. about the, about the whole Acadia dunk yeah I, it's just like no one ever saw me do it right like, unless it's face to face but yeah you know no, no the crowd went crowd got lit after that and i think it's just funny <laughs> how you have like one huge highlight against that team and they end up picking you up later down on the road anyways continue yeah, about your Acadia. I, 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 <laughs> no, like so I went so um got recruited. I was I honestly was supposed to go to the cater for recruiting visit for next mm-hmm. year for mm-hmm. 2019, 2020. But right. the visit ended up turning to me staying. Yeah. I thought it was because they saw it and I thought it made sense and like the first game back, like we played the number one team in our conference, Dalhousie, and I played very well. Mm-hmm. Game winning game winning layup. Um it was loud. <laughs> loud, loud. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no. It I felt revitalized after that. Like I felt like you know, like I'm back, I'm better, and now I'm gonna do it right this time. Yeah, and and now we've seen a few other guys go to Acadia afterwards and and really enjoy their time there. And it's good level basketball anywhere. CIS, I think it's U Sports now, right? So any U Sports basketball, it's you're gonna have moments. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. Um, yeah. So um, now that we're done with Acadia, let's talk about your expectations you had going into university and then how it kind of ended up ultimately shaking out for you and just how would you kind of remember your time overall in university? Um, overall, no, I'm happy to have um, played basketball in university because, again, like, whether it be good or bad, there's a lot of things that you learn about yourself. And like again, like I went to San Francisco, an eighteen year old kid, like very talented, but didn't ex- but didn't like have any mind or expectations on what was to come. Mm-hmm. And um, overall, like the experience of being at San Effect, like it shaped me, mm-hmm. and got me ready for the next part of my life. Like I have a degree in business, like I have a finance and accounting background. So that's a, that's a part of my life that I've like, added to myself. So like if I want to like stop playing basketball, I can just get into that industry and like start working like mm-hmm. that. But my heart just didn't feel ready for that yet. And then like I also being in university, like just comparing myself to other guys, like mm-hmm. even though I was placed in, I still said to myself like, oh, I can do this too. I can do that. I can do that. But am I willing to work on those things? I didn't you, work on those things. You, you just said something really out. important. You just said something really important. Sorry to cut you off, but there was something really important in yeah. there where you're talking about how like your heart wasn't ready to go to like the business world and like the yeah. you know, the nine to five world. And I think that's something that even outside of basketball that a lot of people are kind of kind of overlooking is the fact that like you know everyone's everyone's timeline that I've known coming out of school and stuff like that. Now that I'm 24 and people are starting to like make definitive moves it's just like no one's I'm had worried. A, everyone's worried everyone's worried but like no one no one's had a, a perfect straight shot you know high like mm-hmm. high school four years and then you know whatever professional school you're going to go to or just after four years going to work like no one no one has it linear right so like like you were yeah. saying about doing like um your heart wasn't ready for it yet it's like i find the people right now that are the happiest are the people that actually kind of took the time to indulge in like those kind of experiences that they wanted to have before they went and, you know, finish up school or before they went and got a job and stuff like that. So I just thought that's a, a really important point that you were just talking about. No, thank you. No. Um, but no, no, like I've, I've learned a lot. And like, I think the injury is probably the best, as much as I bad as it sounds, like it's probably the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Mm-hmm. Cause if I didn't get injured, I would have been the same person. I probably would have still been playing pro, don't get me wrong. I probably would be playing overseas, don't get me wrong. But like those qualities that like I was missing, 
it, mm. it had to come from somewhere. And even how bad it was, I'm not wishing on anybody. But like, if you have a, have an injury, you have to like it's for a learning experience to teach you something. And like, I learned a lot from it. And like, my mindset has changed a lot. And like, I matured like, especially being away from playing playing basketball with X, like I matured a lot. I have my mistakes. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm terrible. Mm. Like if I me saying that I'm terrible, people know me. Like I make mistakes a lot. So like you know. I remember LA like, Fitness tale. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. It, that's, it, was that's that's it was time to leave. It was time to leave. It's time to leave. Yeah, it's time to leave. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> but, to get, you did. <laughs> no, but yeah, trust. But um, no, nah, like I, I went a lot, man. And I'm happy for it, and because of that, it put me in the position that I'm in now. And like, sure, I could be somewhere a lot better, and like, I should be in a great, maybe better position than I am now. But mm-hmm. sometimes you have to start somewhere and be and be humble to understand that you put yourself in a position now like build from it see where it takes you i always have a backup plan always mm. have a backup plan there but i love basketball i want to play basketball and having and you know what's crazy too the complacency ties in with like my love for basketball mm-hmm. basketball became more of a chore than a game that i love and appreciate it mm-hmm. when i have an injury after i love basketball that that one thing that why I didn't have the one. I just played. It. Yeah. And that's why a lot of, and that's what there was a lot of separation between me and a lot of people because I didn't have the why. Why do I mm-hmm. play basketball? Why am I doing this? Like, am I doing it to, for myself? Am I doing it for people, for validation, to be mm-hmm. certified? No. No, you should do it for yourself, man. You, you love playing, playing basketball. You love playing the game. You like learning. That's what Kobe yeah. is like. Rest in peace. Like you yeah. want to be a student. You want to understand what it is. And I may not be like again, like from first year university to when I was at um, Acadia, I was always a bench guy. I played a mm-hmm. lot at Acadia. I don't mean wrong, but at X, I didn't play that. I didn't play that much in my mm-hmm. my three years. Time. I didn't play a lot, and like I'm surprised to this day of like, me even playing now. I'm like I never thought that I would be playing with playing basketball overseas mm-hmm. it's just like understanding that you gotta you gotta um be humble and aware that even if you may not reach those certain goals all you have to do is just believe and mm-hmm. that one step in believing will obviously make you that much more um Valid, validizing yourself, validizing yourself that much more, validating sorry, yourself yeah, that there much is. more, <laughs> <And> you're validizing, <laughs> validating yourself that much more in yeah. terms of um, your journey. Yeah, and that's something I want to talk about too, because like, yeah, you didn't um, get too much rep in uh, X Men, and then Acadia, you start playing, but like on paper or from the outside, that's like that's not normally uh, a career trajectory that turns pro, you know? Yeah. So, oh, no. um, <laughs> so, so talk about sticking with it and uh, ending up getting your, your first pro contract and obviously in your second season now. Again, taking that leap of faith and betting on yourself. So I, I'm still in the process of betting on myself and so far it's going well. I'm happy. But um, just the whole process of me getting to this point, I, I never thought it would ever happen. Personally, mm-hmm. just for the path I've been on since like 2013, I never thought this would happen. I'm so thankful and like thankful that God's an institution for a purpose and a reason. That's beyond me. I don't know why I'm here, but it's clear for a, for, for a purpose. Mm-hmm. And whatever that purpose is, I want it to be fulfilled. You've mentioned it a few times now throughout the process. Your brother, your brother is uh, Simi Shitu, who is right now at the time of recording. Um, he's with the G League Westchester Knicks right now. He's had stints yeah. with the Bulls. He's done contracts with the Bulls, um, and he was kind of a guy that was really highly regarded. You know, early on in high school, goes plays prep, um, and kind of goes through the typical like NBA journey, right? The path towards the NBA. Um, your older brother, what was the dynamic, uh, you going through your journey while he's going through his, was there anything that kind of like that you, you found beneficial that you were learning from his journey or, and what are some stuff that you were kind of giving back down to him to learn from? And like, what was that dynamic of you guys going on, you know, the different journeys? 
the biggest thing is me and my brother have we've always thought ourselves as equals. Mm-hmm. We've never like asked my brother's never asked like he's more elite than me or more certified right. than me. He's always asked mm-hmm. if he's my equal. Like mm-hmm. just because like, hey, like I've accomplished more than you ever could or mm-hmm. I've done more than you've experienced. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean that I'm any better than you. I just I'm happy that God blessed me with this opportunity and like I was always and we're going through this together. Mm-hmm. Like I may not be playing with him, but like I'm experiencing this whole all this this mm-hmm. whole process with him. Like winning AU nationals, going to Mount Bird, being mm-hmm. a Madonna American, um, joining my all American, going to Vanderbilt, being like mm-hmm. Carl Malone top ten list, or being a Naismith, like like all like second team and all that stuff. Like certain things that you can't really comprehend. Is in mm-hmm. your own sibling. Like I experienced that through him, and I was happy for him on the whole mm-hmm. journey. But we never had any disputes or any problems. But that's between the both of us. But other people of mm-hmm. the outside would be like, "Oh, like your brother's doing this. Why aren't you doing this? Mm-hmm. Um, what happened to you, Tail? Like, hey, like again, mm-hmm. it comes down to my, how I see things and how he sees things. He took it." Right. Seriously, from when he was younger, and he's had the guidance. He's had, mm-hmm. he had, mommy said the guidance, like, we, he, it was based on talent and hard work, but he mm-hmm. knew that he was talented, just worked on it more, mm-hmm. more than I did. He's, unlike other guys who have had, like, people in the, in the back, like, telling them how to mm-hmm. do this, like, the loopholes to get here and get there, he didn't. Me and my mm-hmm. brother had to learn it on our own. He had to learn it on his own. How do you how do you keep a good relationship with your brother when there's constantly people like trying to put wedges in there and like obviously they're talking like about you through him and then they'll say some crazy stuff like your brother's doing this why aren't you doing that right and then like how do you kind of separate church and state at that point but okay I can't get mad at my brother for for these things but like inevitably I would feel like that would kind of be that would piss me off after a while right. <clears throat> To be honest, like it got to the point where like more people were asking me about my brother more than myself. Mm-hmm. I didn't care. Like I'm going to like I'm going to run for my brother, but runs are for him, not for me. Like mm-hmm. I'm there. I'm a hooper too, but like I'm watching my brother play basketball with mm-hmm. other guys I should be playing with. Mm-hmm. So like again, like the respect level. Sometimes mm-hmm. you gotta earn it. Some mm-hmm. like a lot of times I had, other times I didn't. Mm-hmm. He already had it because of like they just wanted to like hey like I had this guy at my run and I, I had this guy playing with us like I wanted to learn from us but for my brother he didn't see it like that he just thought it was just whatever because at the end of the day mm-hmm. like I'm supporting my brother and whatever it is I never got jealous about my brother I never worried about what other people thought I just like I just felt like sometimes like it's just like just cool it like you don't need to talk to me about it all the time mm-hmm. like, it is what it is like, my brother's here and I'm here. I'm gonna get this thing. I'm not gonna catch up, but like, I, if I reach for it, I'll get there. Right, and, and at the end of the day, it's family, right? So yeah, whatever, right. Su- whatever success happens in the family, it's it's the family success too. It's not just yeah. he's doing this, I'm doing that. It's, you know, as a family, we moved up. Uh, yeah, and there's a there's a there's a cool uh, documentary that uh, that you guys did. You and the family did a while ago. Uh, I believe mm-hmm. it was against all odds. Is my right in that? Yeah, against all odds. And then <laughs> you had a funny little quote. You're saying, I, you're talking about how you used to fry him. You're like, I used to yeah. fry this guy <laughs> and growing up. Um, but yeah, we, we already talked about it. There was no, there was no animosity during the come up. You guys were definitely supportive. No, we fought a lot, though. We fought a lot, though, when it came yeah. to like, playing with each other and stuff. No, we fought a deets, lot. Deets. I don't want to lie. Like, we used to, like, play basketball one-on-one. Swing? Yeah, one-on-one. Yeah, we had no. There's a couple times we swung before, like throwing oh, the ball yeah. at each other, like yeah. shooting at each other. Like I'm not uh-huh. crying, but like I'm pushing and bullying him. Then it gets gets to yeah. the point where like you know, like he's growing older. You have to have more respect mm-hmm. for him. But mm-hmm. the thing is as well, like in terms of sibling relationship, like my brother may be 21, mm-hmm. but he has a 25 year old brain because he has yeah. he's had older guys to look to um watch watch mm-hmm. over him or like be around like he's had like Willie Phil he's had yeah. um other guys in Burlington and all the older heads he's played with like in the states to like keep mm-hmm. in check and have and make his maturity that much more apparent than like the normal 19 18 17 year old like he's 17 I think he's 22 because of the experiences mm-hmm. that he's got 
Like yeah. stuff that 22 year olds have experienced now, my brother's been through at 15 years old, living out, living away from home, not being around family, paying for like having his own meals, traveling here and everywhere, managing schoolwork, like mm-hmm. qualities that like my brother has been dealing with and like building on since he was you know, 14 years old. Yeah, yeah, I figured a lot of the times that he's he's younger and, but you yourself, you, you you probably get mistaken for an older age all the time as well because you're at a very balanced point as well. And yeah. <laughs> I don't know, that's something that you're talking about. Well, about experiences, right. right? Let's move a little bit outside of basketball. I want to ask you about like kind of okay. just your outlets outside of basketball. And one of the things that happened over the summer, that aired over the summer, or actually aired more recently than that, but uh, – was this kind of Toronto sort of uh, reality TV thing that happened called Love After Lockdown? I'm rolling my eyes, don't kill me. No, dude, that was that was generally the most fun I've had this summer, I think. Watching that, it is just picking your brain on it and stuff like that. So uh, what did, how did that come about? And what drove you to end up doing it? Um, bored during quarantine wasn't hinge. A girl that I knew... <laughs> Um, she mastered me and we talked yeah. and she told me that she um, has, um, she's doing a project presentation mm-hmm. and it was love, call off, love of the lockdown. So they told me right. to be a cast call. I went there. I had no idea. I literally went there to like probably not get it. Yeah. But I was being myself. It's something to do during lockdown. It. Huh? It was something to do during a lockdown, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, something to do during a lockdown. Besides training and playing, training my brother and stuff, like, it was something, yeah. like something to do, something cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I did the casting call. I personally did not think I was going to call back. So they called me back. Yeah. But I'm like, what? Me? <laughs> Kale? Oh, I'm like, no. You don't know I'm on TV, please. You do not want me. Because I promise you, anyone knows me, like, if you catch me on TV or on a live or anything, you're gonna laugh, yeah. or you're gonna. Laugh. <laughs> I laugh myself sometimes. But yeah. so then I got the casting call, like, and they invited me back. Mm-hmm. And we went on the day, and well, you watched the whole thing, right? Oh, oh yeah. Um, so yeah. Oh, yeah. How'd you feel about it? How'd you feel about it? Yeah, it was just, it was just funny. Honestly, I thought it was. I th- first of all, I think I, I think you got robbed. Okay, I think every time you talk to her right you asked her a question they would just you know randomly cut out or like pan to the floor and then come back and it goes back to you being asked a question and then talking so it made it sound like that you were doing like all the talking on this date or whatever yeah when, but like when, when you could I, see the points where they cut out yeah exactly like you got like, robbed first thing for me i didn't know I, I, i'll be honest with you like i didn't think i thought the date went well even though i'm being pale i'm being myself mm-hmm. like i thought it went well and then after watching, I didn't know like any of this stuff because like I left early to come here, right? But the, the mm-hmm. cast members were shot. Like mm-hmm. they had like a um, a private watch between the cast members, the yeah. video crew, all that stuff, the producers and stuff. I yeah. never knew that episode or what was said. So like her saying when she introduced herself that she just got energy, like I matched that. Like I didn't mm-hmm. know, but. I guess the energy was too much. And I said it, I said it straight up most of the time while I'm single because I'm, I'm just too built different. I'm just too high maintenance, I guess. They have so, the energy. Yeah. No, but I, I think he, I think he got robbed for sure. And I also think it's funny <laughs> that there was someone on hinge just recruiting people. <laughs> That's true. But do you know how many people they, they were like picking from? There was like 2,500 mm-hmm. guys. Yeah. For one girl, 2,500 guys. And they yeah. picked me, I'm like, why? <laughs> it's, better, hey, it's, better than. it's it's, it's in the better DNA. Than. It's in the DNA now. It's look, you're on a crash course. You might not like it, but <laughs> it's seven okay. years from now, it's going to be a, a Teo episode, a Teo season of The Bachelor, and I'm going to be there. Yeah. It's going to be the first season I ever hey, watched. If that, hey, if that happens, hey, if that ever happens, if that ever happens, oh, it'd, it'd be gold. It'd be absolute gold. Everyone keeps telling me that. Bro. Like, seriously, people mention, people mention me after the episode, like, you hey, you need a spinoff. Like, yeah. you, I, I don't know what you did, but you're the one that got them, that yeah. brought the Tail news, a- brought them in. Tail after lockdown, make it happen. I'll sign that petition right now. I'll make the petition right now. 
Did you make the question all the time? And I swear, people, I just keep you watch your planet. Hey, but my planet, so. Bro, um, but yeah, besides all that, I think you easily had the most watched episode of that season. I think you had more views on that episode than even the season finale or whatever. Yeah, so. no. So I mean, I'm I hate to tell you, but like it's it's in the blood now. It's gonna happen. Yeah, and I'm, I'm I'm all for it. You have to embrace it. You gotta embrace it. The whole world is who I am now. Um, there was another thing that I wanted to ask you about that, like it's kind of like how we got introduced to each other. Um, it's you kind of like, I, I call it a collective. I don't know what you want to call it, but OMFM, it's just the kind yeah. of network that you have with, with those guys. I think that's like, like one of the most important things I've seen come out of Burlington in a while. Cause it's, it's, well, I want you to explain what it is and I'll tell you later why I, I love it. But yeah, explain to us that. Um, so like OMFM stands for our movement family motivation. And mm-hmm. like, it's just a group of us, right? Like we're mm-hmm. all, we all grew up in like, well, me personally, like I'm, I wasn't separate, but me and my brother, Isaac and all guys, like we all grew up in high school with each other. But yeah. Jimmy was with Nana, Luke and all mm-hmm. guys. And they all like knew each other. So like what happened was during the pandemic, we all started training each other, having mm-hmm. our boot camp and Alexander's and all that stuff. And kids are going to join and then like all the mm-hmm. other rap programs in Burns and we're trying to get involved and mm-hmm. for our services I guess and help teach kids and do camp and encourage certain things. Um but we we're just a group of kids who want to like help other guys like get to that point in their life, like go like mature because mm-hmm. like again, me being that individual who has to go through like get it through the mud, like get it and understand like what it took and like learn from my own mistakes. Like, I, I want those same kids in Burlington to, to mm-hmm. make those same mistakes. Not that my brother want to let those kids make those mistakes because there's a lot of time mm-hmm. for kids in Halton. There's a lot of time for kids in Burlington. And Burlington now, like, has liked basketball more than they've ever liked it since, like, I was, mm-hmm. like, Oh, school. it's not even close. Like, it's not close. It's changed. Like, the, the whole dynamic in the culture's changed now. Like, even just, like, Ontario culture, like, it's more basketball than it's hockey. Maybe in my pers- maybe in my own opinion, mm-hmm. but specifically Burlington, Halton, uh, basketball takes takes it for me because I when we you were there like when we had that camp, yeah. there were so many kids and then when we had like like kids that were trying to like just little kids at first just doing like shooting around learning one or two drills mm-hmm. and then we had like a top twenty camp and then we had that top forty camp or whatever and then we narrowed it down to twenty. Mm-hmm. You see how competitive it was and how. Mm-hmm. How many kids like came to the games and mm-hmm. not games? So like, how many kids like came to right. like, play? And then when we narrowed it down to the top 20, 10 versus ten, and how hype it was, like you saw what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That last like minute, back to back threes, a dunk, <laughs> and another three to back three, it just it was hype. And it's just like, that's the kind of injury you need. Like you don't really get that. You wouldn't really get that in when I was in mm-hmm. when I was in high school. Like it was just very like technical there's no energy there's no hype there's no passion so we want to change the culture bro and be more be, be more have the kind of mentorship to these kids right. and like i won't lie there's so many kids that will message me or my bro or omsm in general who want to work because they see what it takes what it took I, it, the, the reason it resonated with me so much is that from what I've seen, and I could be wrong, but this is how I understand it. It's it, basketball is a major part of it, but it, it's it's past basketball. So it's it's yeah. a group. It's a group of you guys, and um, and girls. It's where it's just you guys. No matter what it is, you're pushing yourselves. You're you're figuring out best ways to to help each other train, and it's it's a network of just really close people that like. I think everyone in that group gets elevated by having those kinds of relationships with each other in the group i think you guys also have a a, a youtuber right he's a he's a fitness youtuber yeah right? gian. Gian, yeah yeah and that's not basketball but like he's benefiting from it in the sense that every anytime he does something it's being pushed or it's being pushed by you guys and i'm sure i'm sure internally there must be a thousand ideas floating back and forth on how to build it up and what i wanted people to get from that as well wow. is that they can have experiences with you guys and omfm and like how to how to 
you know, work like that. But I think people should be doing that within their own subgroups of friends as well. You know what I mean? Just like seeing the value of having your own network. Like, yeah, you have a couple buddies, but what do you guys do? You play Xbox for six hours every night. Like, that's Call not, of Duty for that's six, not six hours, seven hours. Yeah, exactly. And like, I'm not, I'm not ripping on the guys. I was doing the same shit. No, trust, no, don't trust me. Yeah. I, like for sure, for sure. But like I'm saying, but like now that you've kind of exposed me to that, it's like there's a better way you could be, you know, every everyone in the friend group benefits, right? Like you can get everyone eating right now if like you guys take that same energy. You guys hang out all the time, anyways. Focus it on like mm-hmm. kind of bettering. So that's that's what I understood, and that's why I think it's like super important. And I hope other people, no offense, rip, rip it out, replicate it, and I think everyone wins that way. So yeah, as, as long as you gotta you gotta just see the, the bigger picture, right? Like you don't want to you when you have a group of people, you don't want mm-hmm. them to fall behind. You want to keep them mm-hmm. on the same level, like. If you need to pick up the speed, I'll help you. Because you can't mm-hmm. do it on your own. Like as humans, we can't do everything by ourselves. We're not superhuman. Mm-hmm. So you gotta have somebody else that you know has been through that, like some sort of mentorship or leadership that helps bring out the best out of you and makes you feel uncomfortable. And eventually, when you become comfortable with that, it it then will. Um, You're better off than you were before. You're better off than you are before, but then it attracts somebody else, and then it mm-hmm. will, um, it becomes contagious. Mm-hmm. Positivity is contagious. I've always been the most positive person, even with my flaws and the stuff and the mistakes I've made. I've always mm-hmm. been positive. I don't ever see negative in situations because negativity just, it's just, it's so, it's so overbearing sometimes. And some people just, when they, when they're very negative, it just changes the mood. And then, like, next thing you know, like, you lose touch of what it is that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Remain positive, and you see that you see on um, your television, and you just you have the drive, and you have that that, that strong and passion and emotion to be better for yourself and for people. There's no need. For, there's no need for you to like, be worried because at the end of the day, people look up to you. You're the light bulb in the room, mm-hmm. and the people want to be around that light and attract people and attract more people. No, I, I feel that for sure. Um, there is one more kind of real question I want to get to before the not so rapid fire. Um, just generic. What what kind of what's the best piece of advice you think you can give right now, given your experiences, to some guys maybe in early on in high school, mid high school? Best piece of advice. Um, I'd say I'd say. Learn from your mistakes and mm-hmm. like try your best not to make the same mistakes because again my I'm a, I'm a, I'm a testimony to that. Like in high school I was mm-hmm. complacent and I felt like I was doing that I needed to prove and then again I have to step my game up again and go to university I thought this again and then look what happened to me. It wasn't even an injury, it was just my mentality. Mm-hmm. You will always you, you will always have the hard work and the talent. As long as long as you put put that forth for yourself, but if you don't have the mentality to um, maintain that same energy, you're not gonna reap the benefits that you want. You want to see those goals that you that you want. So, mm-hmm. for kids in high school or middle school, I I just I say to them to just be real yourself and know that you're capable of more, and not to worry about what the outcome is. Just do what you have to do. And on that note, that's Teo's shit to everybody. That was a great talk. I think people are going to get a lot from it. Don't know, fam. Thank you. I Thanks, appreciate bro. it. Appreciate you, Don't man. know. Yeah. Easy. See you guys.